Hey everyone, it's uh, Mr. Tech Easy coming back at you with another how-to video. Uh, this video is just going to be a short and simple, uh, sweet video. Um, how to remove the back panel of the Unibody MacBook Pro um, in order to uh, access the components internally. Um, this is just kind of a starter video. It's a short one just to access this stuff inside. I'll make other videos to actually show you what to do once you're inside. So. Um, so starting out, uh, I've got a piece of foam here that we're going to set this on so it doesn't get scratched up. 13.3 uh, inch late 2011 MacBook Pro unibody. Uh, flip this over right here. Um, as you can see, this black edge right there, uh, that right there is the uh, LCD hinge. And I'm going to have that facing me for this right now. Uh, there's 10 screws on the back. Uh, of the 13, the 15, and the 17 inch model. Uh, they're just kind of spaced out more on the larger models. Um, along the back side, uh, if you've got the back facing you, again where the black LCD hinge is, um, the leftmost three screws here uh, are all longer screws. Um, the other seven screws are gonna be really short screws. Now on some MacBook Pros, the short screws are not always identical. They're the same length, um, but some of them have a little uh, beveled edge underneath the head um, so this unit does not have that on any of these so I will show you the difference between the two here in just a moment so anyways so we're gonna start uh, with an ice cube tray I use these to place all of my screws in um, now this step is going to be a short and simple step um, it's really only a single step kind of process to remove this back panel to access things inside um, normally what I do is all the parts that hold in a piece I will put into one uh, one little ice cube tray thing there, so or one cube. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with these three long screws here. Um, now keep in mind, uh, these three, uh, all these screws here, um, with the exception of these three, are kind of angled in. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start by removing these right now. These are almost always a Phillips head screw. However, some units have um, either a Torx bit or a pentalobe. Um, so these ones happen to be Phillips. So anyways, that's the long screw. Now I'm going to show you one of the short screws so you can see the difference. So there's a huge difference between the screws. Uh, now with these short screws on this particular model, uh, I'm going to see if I can get this in here as close as possible. These have threads going all the way from the little triangle tip all the way down to the head. Uh, now like I said, some MacBook Pro models, um, down at the bottom towards the head, there's actually a little metal beveled edge there. Uh, I don't know why Apple did that. I'm going to grab one of those screws really quick to show you. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna try to show you this as good as I possibly can. This is one of the oddball screws. So here we go. I'm hoping you guys can see this, but there's a little metal edge there that's not threaded. Um, and again, some MacBook Pros have these, some don't. The ones that have them though, not all of the small screws are like that. Some have that little beveled edge on them and some are like these ones where it's threaded all the way. Why the difference? I'm not sure. Um, but as you're taking all the small screws off, if you come across any of those with a strange beveled edge, make note of where you pulled them off. Uh, you can either separate them from the other screws, uh, draw it on a piece of paper, just make a mental note. But you wanna make sure that those special screws go back in the holes that they came out of. Um, uh, because there's some little difference uh, as to how they go in. Uh, why Apple did that, I'm not sure. Why it's not like that on all the models, again, I'm not sure. So uh, again, if it's got that little metal edge on it, or if there's any difference between the small screws, um, you need to make sure to know where they go. Now on this particular model that I'm working on, 
all of these screws, all the small screws are identical. None of them have that special beveled edge. So I can mix them all together and not worry about it. Um, so again, these three leftmost screws towards the end are all long screws. Um, I know some people out there that are pretty tech savvy or being like, oh my gosh, this is taking so long. Why would you do this video? Well, there's some people out there that are afraid of computers, afraid of opening their computer up, have no idea what they're doing at all, or just think that something might go wrong. Um, so I'm just trying to uh, put those people at ease and show a video of even the most simple stuff so that people can actually follow it and do it themselves rather than having to have somebody else do it for them. Um, you shouldn't be afraid of your MacBook. Um, you know, all the hardware is just parts and pieces. It's a puzzle. Uh, taking it apart and putting it back together. Uh, the difference is I'm here to help you piece it back together after it's taken apart. So uh, again, as you can see, we've got seven of the small screws. They're all identical, so it doesn't matter which of the holes they came out of or go back into. And the three long screws. So. I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way. And again, on my ice cube tray, I'm going to group all of these into one cube because all of these screws right there are all used for this one single piece. Uh, now, if there's two pieces, I would individualize the screws into cubes for each piece, but these are all for one. So now, on the back here, along this is the vent uh, where the cooling's actually done, airflow comes out of here. Now, this is the easiest place to grab it uh, because it's all pretty smooth along the edges. Um, so you can just grab it with your fingers right there and pull it up. That's the bottom right there. Again, that's the vent in the back. Um, now on the 15 and 17 inch models, along the edge here, uh, sometimes there are some little uh, things that snap into place. Uh, along the inside of the board somewhere. Uh, usually it's along the battery. Um, and that's to help on the uh, 15 and 70 inch models. Again, they use the same number of screws, but it's a larger area to keep in place. So they use the snaps to kind of keep things firm. So, um, so on a 15 or 17 inch model, when you're pulling this up, there might be a little resistance to it, and it's because those are snaps. So you just kind of have to pull up on it and they'll unsnap. Um, so that's it, the back panel. Here we are, uh, you're looking at the inside of a late 2011 model MacBook Pro 13 inch. Uh, again, 15 and 17 inch are gonna have stuff similar, but um, uh, they're gonna have dual fans and a slightly larger logic board. Some of the cabling may be different. Cabling is also different depending on uh, the year uh, of MacBook Pro that you're looking at. But for the most part, they've kept things pretty similar. Uh, this is one of the reasons I'm mostly focusing on doing videos of Macs uh, because they're interchangeable between most versus laptops. Uh, everything could be completely different as how they're designed. So um, at least on a 13 inch MacBook Pro, whether it's a 2009, 10, 11, or 12, most of this stuff's going to be in the similar area. So things are going to look very similar to what you're looking at. Um, and the same with the screws on the back. They're all going to have the same number of screws uh, like that. So anyways, to put things back on, again, you just line the lid up along the back and let it fall into place. Now, if it's a 15 or 17 inch model, you can kind of push along that center part there and that'll help snap those clips into place. Um, other than that, all we need to do now is go back and put the screws in. Now again, we've got the three long screws for along the back side uh, where the hinge is. I'm going to set those in first. What I like to do is I like to go through and actually just start the threads. I don't like to screw them tight yet until all of them are in. And the reason being, uh, sometimes the holes don't line up properly. It's a little off, off camber or something. So. Here's the other thing. Um, when you're putting these screws back in, keep in mind they go at an angle. These aren't going straight down, uh, okay? They go in at a slight angle. So you wanna kinda make sure that you're going at that angle when you're screwing them in. Uh, otherwise you can strip your threads. Um, so as you're screwing those in a little bit, if it feels like it's 
kind of sticking or whatever, back it out and start to screw it in again. Um, and the reason being, uh, you don't want to strip the screws or the holes that they go into. So again, I'm just going through really quick and loosely putting the screws in there. That way the whole lid is, I can still kind of move the lid around a little bit uh, just to make sure it's all lined up or on the edge is fine. And then from there I can go ahead and start tightening these down. Now again, these back four, these are straight up and down. These uh, front four and the side two ones are at an angle. So you're not going straight down, you're kind of going at a slight angle. And just tighten them snug. You don't have to wrench to the point where you're going to strip the screw or your screwdriver head. One thing you want to be careful of when you're doing this uh, is hold your screwdriver in place. If you're trying to screw it and it slides, you can actually scratch the bottom surface. Uh, now scratches aren't going to affect anything performance or functionality wise. Um, and it's the bottom, so it's likely going to have scratches on it anyways. This is just in really good shape. Uh, but the bottom line is, is the better shape that your MacBook is in, um, if you go to sell it, uh, the more valuable it usually is. Um, I don't know why people complain about scratches. They don't affect anything, but um, some people like things to be in pristine shape. So there you have it. Uh, that's just the easy access to the bottom panel. Uh, we'll dig deeper into actually doing stuff once we get there in some more videos. Uh, I'll do a how-to video on a RAM upgrade uh, or, or change uh, a hard drive, uh, and then we'll get even more in depth uh, further than that, replacing logic boards, uh, fans, things like that. So. Uh, make sure to uh, like the video if uh, you thought it did good. Make sure to leave comments if you have any input, uh, good or bad. Um, I can take constructive criticism. I just want to make this channel good so that uh, people that uh, don't have a lot of knowledge with computers can kind of do something on their own to help themselves out so they don't have to take it in or have somebody else do it. Uh, Macs are great, um, but it's always good to be able to be able to work on your own stuff. So, Anyways, uh, Mr. Tech Easy here. Uh, thanks for watching the video.